I kind of figured this out, this playing music uh, aspect of it. When I was about 15, 16, I grew up in Pennsylvania, and uh, uh, there was a resort area. And there was this place called Mount Airy Lodge. And I got a gig, this is around 67, 68. I get a gig with Bob Newman and the Starlight Orchestra at Mount Airy Lodge, which was kind of a honeymoon place. And I was no musician. I was a hick guitar player, you know, bar band guy. But they needed, at that point, by then, in the 60s, they needed an electric guitar to make that, you know, make the sound of an electric. So I'd be there with, the rest of the band were real musicians, you know, jazz guys from New York City that, that would be there in, in the summertime. And uh, I, I sat next to the bass player, Steve Gilmore, played big upright bass, and he'd holler out every second or third change to me, B minor, F, you know, and I'd what, what, do something, play a little thing, and that's how I, I got through that. So that was kind of like scary at first. It was working until I got the attitude from those guys that it's playing music. Have fun. So then I started having fun, and I have ever since. So like I said, it's playing music, it's not working music. We should never be afraid of getting out there in front of people because really, whether it's, it's your sister listening to you or 60,000 people, it's the same. You're going to play the same thing, right? Um, when I, this would have been in 88, like in the, in, the, in the early part of 1988, I get a phone call one day and, uh, from Elliot Roberts, who was, was a great manager. Elliot's gone now, but he was a really good guy and a, a great manager. He had been my manager for a minute earlier, but he managed like Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and, and major guy in, in the music. Anyway, I get a call from Elliot and he says, uh, this was on a Tuesday. And he says, hey, Bob, by that he meant Bob Dylan, is coming to town tomorrow night and he wanted to play. Can you get a bass player and a drummer and be at this particular studio at 10 o'clock tomorrow evening? I said, yeah, sure. And I'm like, wow, Bob, that's exciting, you know, because I'm a huge Bob fan from the first record. So uh, I get T-Bone Wolk, my great dearly departed friend, and uh, Chris Parker, wonderful drummer who was playing uh, with the Saturday Night Live band at the time. They both were. And we were there at the studio at 10 o'clock. Well, time's going by, time's going by. Eventually, Bob shows up and, and he comes and straps on, I believe he had a Stratocaster at the time. And he just starts kind of playing an E chord and we're following him and trying to get something, but he doesn't seem like he's very inspired at that point. And um, after a little bit, he, he, he turns to me and T-Bone, who are standing there watching him, you know, and he says, you guys know Pretty Peggio? And we go, sure, in unison, like chipmunk twins, you know, sure. And he goes, you do? And he turns around, and he starts playing his old folk song, Pretty Peggio, Civil War song. And um, he starts doing that song, and we did know Pretty Peggio, you know, so we follow him along pretty good, and... Then he played a bunch of stuff, and, and we had a, what I felt was probably a good time. I don't know. And, uh, okay, so then we leave, and it was like, wow, that was cool. You know, we got to play with Bob Dylan for a few hours. That was really fun. The next day, Elliot Roberts calls me up again. He goes, all right, you passed the audition. The rehearsals start in California, and I go, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Audition? You didn't tell me it was an audition. He goes, oh, yeah, 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 you're in. Wow. wow. So that was uh, pretty exciting. So what I did then, like I said, I was a huge Bob Dylan fan. I went back and I studied all the pictures. Robbie Robertson, killer guitar player who had obviously done all this great work with Bob. Michael Bloomfield, one of my personal favorites. I could do hours on Bloomfield. Um, I studied photos of them. And in almost every photo, 
Bob's in the middle of the stage. They're off to his right looking at his hands. And I went, okay, that's what I got to do. So I made sure that's where I set up to his right. And I watched his hands because he would change songs. You know, he was in that folk tradition, that blues tradition of he might not play it the same way every time. Different songs. Or he might play a song that you never heard before, the band had never heard. And you just have to follow. I always really enjoyed that seat of the pants thing. It's scary, and you'll make some mistakes. It doesn't matter. The audience doesn't hear most of the mistakes unless they're really just like terminal clams. You know, they're not going to hear them. You just go on. If you got a good intro and a good ending, you're golden. So never be afraid to go out and play, and that's how you learn, you know? Makes it fun.